श्री मनो भीष्ट स्थापित ये न भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मैं ददादी स्वदाति वंदेह श्री गुरु श्रीयुतापकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम सागर जाता सह गणा रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साद्वैत सवदूत पिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सह गणा ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर्भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम तवैवास्मी तवैवास्मी न जीवामी त्वया विना इति विज्ञान देवी तम नयमा चरनाटिक सो इट हेज बीन अ लॉन्ग टाइम सिंस वी हेव ऑल मेट एंड वी वर स्पीकिंग ऑन गिरिराज कथा बट बिकॉज राधाष्टमी इज अपकमिंग आई थॉट दैट मे बी वी कुड सेट द मूड एंड you know set our consciousness to welcome shrimati radha rani because it is her appearance day so we can all welcome her in our hearts in our minds and we can perform our services to please her which uh, is eternally and constantly going on in the spiritual world so i would like to start by talking about what shrila prabhupad when he actually um, was ready to go on jaladuta so when shila prabhupad was on jaladuta after his departure from vrindavan in 1965 he left his home in radha damodar temple and after compiling shrimad bhagavatam and translating the purports of the first canto he then came to mumbai and after coming to mumbai he stayed in mumbai for some days and he was giving lectures he was preparing um you know all his shrimad bhagavatam books he was putting them in various book stores where they could be accessible to people and he was connecting with a lot of people he was making a lot of connections and there especially in the radha rasvihari temple he got special mercy of shrimati radharani and krishna where he connected with uh, uh, shrimati morarji who you know was the owner of the cargo ship uh company and it was then that she actually uh, agreed to give prabhupad a free ticket for a passage to united states he had to plead to her he had to beg to her and he had to really convince her that he's going to be fine because he she told him that it is not easy he was at that time turning 69 and she told him that it's not going to be an easy journey for you it's very difficult the journey of 30 days in sea for a old man where he suffered three heart attacks and then she said not only that the western world is very cold like cold in terms of weather as well as people they are not going to accept what you teach so fast america is cold it's the winters are very harsh and you are coming from vrindavan and mumbai and you have no idea of how difficult it is going to be for you to preach but shila prabhupad was begging for an opportunity he was begging to her to give him one chance and he said that i want to do this because i have the orders of my spiritual master shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur to go and spread the message of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu he also said that bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur has ordered him to translate everything in english 
because english is a very widely accepted language and it is universal and other people who don't understand sanskrit will actually understand whatever prabhupada has translated the pure literature shrimad bhagavatam and they could have these literatures could have access to sri chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy so shrila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he was shrila prabhupada's guru and he was truly the perfect representative of the six goswamis and also chaitanya mahaprabhu's parampara and he wrote and he has mentioned that the ultimate perfection the ultimate aspiration and the ultimate perfection of one's life is to attain radha dasyam i'll repeat shri bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur said that the ultimate aspiration and highest perfection is to attain radha dasyam that is what does that mean to be the servant of shrimati radharani in fact lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he taught us what our prayer of the highest aspiration should be and he also said that gopi bhartur pada kamalayor das 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 anudas which means to be the servant of the servant of the servant of gopis and what are all these gopis doing all these gopis are serving shrimati radharani in our upcoming braj leelas which we'll talk shortly you will see what all the gopis do and you will know what your services in the spiritual world will be like if we all make it some day to the spiritual world once bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur was asked that um, by what means can we receive the complete mercy of krishna so bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he replied to this he said when shri varsha bhanavi that is the the daughter of king rishabhanu that is shrimati radharani accepts someone as her very own that is as a rupanuga that is as one of the followers of rupa goswami then only the full mercy of krishna is accessible to that person so it's only when shrimati radharani accepts you as rupa goswami's follower as rupa goswami's servant only then you will have complete access to krishna's mercy and he can only attain this if he has become a kinkari or kinkara at the lotus feet of shri gurudev what do you mean by kinkari or kinkara kim means what means what kim karam means what and kara means do so kim kara means what should i do so that should be our mood to shila gurudev and in the service of shrimati radharani so a king kari is one who is always in the mood of service she is always in the mood of serving gurudev that is our acharyas and always in the mood of serving shrimati radharani so kim karomi so king kir king kari always has a mood that what should i do how may i serve you and how can i help you to please you so this is the mood of a king kari so it is said that therefore to become a servant is a servant very proud is a servant having lot of possessions is a servant very haughty no to become a kinkari one has to become humble develop a humble attitude and it is therefore necessary for each and every one of us to become humble so he said that you should always have this one statement etched in your mind and heart and in your attitude and actions trinadapi sunichera trinadapi sunichena means one has to be more humble than a blade of grass and have forsaken all his identity his qualities his possessions and have only one identity that i am the servant of my gurudev now i know it is very difficult for us in this world where we are, where we are living to give up our identity but if you actually think from this perspective giving up identity doesn't mean not recognizing yourself as seema mata ji or radha bhav or padmavati ma it means that we have attachments i am this one's wife i am this one's mother i am this one's friend 
those are identities i am a lawyer i am a doctor i am an engineer all these are identities these make us proud these bring false pride in us these cause attachments in us that i am attached to my husband i am attached to my wife i am attached to my children my mothers my in laws my house my car my clothes all these have to be cut off severed but it's not very easy to cut it off it's not very easy it's very easy to say but it's very deeply embedded in us from millions and millions of births we are attached to all these things but with the association of devotees with the association of pure devotees with the association of krishna katha by constantly hearing by constantly hearing the past times of krishna in vrindavan radharani and krishna in vrindavan past times of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu by sincerely trying and making an attempt to offensively chant and by worshiping the lordship we some day can attain this state by being trinadapi sunichara it's the humility is a by product it is a fruit of our sincere bhakti it naturally comes and when humility comes your you'll automatically have detachment you will not have attachment to your possessions your identity or your qualities that i am so this i am so that i can paint i can dance i can sing all this will not make you proud but in fact it will make you humble so hearing krishna katha will make us have two things that will happen what will happen hearing krishna katha we will be constantly absorbed in krishna consciousness and we will be detached from all material attachments these two things will happen and it this is very clearly stated in shrimad bhagavatam in canto 10 um 10.46.21 there is a very nice shlok which is there stated by uddhav he says smaratam krishna viryani lila pang nirikshitam hasitam भाषितं चांगा सर्वना शीतली स्थितली क्रिया व्हाट डज इट मीन इट सेज दैट एज वी रिमेंबर द वंडरफुल डीड्स दैट कृष्णा परफॉर्मड हिज प्लेफुल साइड लॉन्ग ग्लांसेस हिज स्माइल्स एंड हिज वर्ड्स ओ उद्धवा वी फॉरगेट ऑल आवर मटेरियल एंगेजमेंट्स सो व्हेन वी रिमेंबर कृष्णास past times his playful glances his smiles and his words we forget all our material attachments so in short he is telling that we should constantly hear and we should constantly chant because these two things will make us forget our material entanglements and attachments and then it is further said in the next verse 10.46.22 sarikchail vinodeshan मुकुंद पाद भूषितानोयातीकोरेटेडीट वेर krishna and radha krishna they tread in all these places in vrindavan the forests the trees the hills our minds become totally absorbed in vraj leela so that says it all so when these two shlokas in shrimad bhagavat are there it is it says it all that why we will continue to hear our vrindavan pastimes of radha and krishna and how it will benefit us the top most so today um let us start by talking about very sweet pastime of radha and krishna and i'd like to make this point that when krishna was the age of paugunda that is he was 9 years to 10 years of between 9 and 10 years of age he carried a black staff a black stick and it had a gold cap on it and he used to carry that everywhere why did he carry this black stuff everywhere because there were three reasons he carried this black stuff one was 
He used to control his cows with that black staff with a golden cap. Second, he used to use it to play and fight with his friends. And third, to declare himself as the heir to Vrindavan's throne. So, you know, kings will carry that black staff. So, in other words, he was the king of Vrindavan for that reason. So, if Krishna is the king of Vrindavan, who is known as the queen of Vrindavan? None other than Vrindavaneshwari Srimati Radharani. So, you could say that she is the queen actually not only of Vrindavan, she is the queen of everything. And this is very sweetly mentioned in um, everyone's favorite Sri Radha Kripa Kataksha Stava. It is a very beautiful prayer written by Lord Shiva. And it is sung in every temple in Vrindavan every day. And specifically, it is the, the Aarti which is offered in Radha Kund every day by whoever goes there. So it is said... The Falashruti of this is very beautiful. It is said that whoever recites this will Sri Radharani at the end of this life with her own eyes. This material body will see Srimati Radharani. So in this um, Radha Kripa, Kripa Kataksha, in the 12th verse, it is mentioned. Makeshwari Kriyeshwari Swadeshwari Sureshwari Triveda Bharati Shwari, Pramana Shashaneshwari, Rameshwari Kshameshwari, Pramodakananeshwari, Vrajeshwari Vrajadhipe, Shri Radhike Namostote. What does it mean? There are various names which Radharani has been designated here. It says, O oh, Makeshwari Radha, Makeshwari Kriyeshwari. So Makeshwari Radha, that is the queen of all Vedic sacrifices. Kriyeshwari Radha, that is queen of all pious activities, which are the root of all potencies. That is the Mula Shakti. O oh, Swadeshwari Radha, that is queen, that is the queen of all, that is natural and spontaneous. O oh, Sureshwari Radha, the queen of all demigods and demigoddesses and all the goddesses. O Triveda Bharatishwari Radha, that is a queen of knowledge of all the three Vedas. You know, we have Trivedis, but this is the queen of knowledge of all the three Vedas. O Pramana Shashaneshwari Radha, that is the queen of the en enforcement of all scriptural principles. O Rameshwari Radha, that is the queen of all the goddesses of fortune, all the Lakshmis put together, that is Rama Devi. O Kshameshwari Radha, the queen of all forgiveness, the most merciful, the most compassionate, and the most forgiving is Srimati Radharani. O Pramoda Kana Neshwari Radha, that is the queen of the most pleasurable forests. Of Sri Vrindavan Dham. O Vrajeshwari Radha, that is the queen of the entire realm of Vrindavan, especially the delightful Keli Kunjas of Vrindavan. Keli's playful uh, Kunjas, where all playful pastimes are performed. O Vrajeshwari Vrajadipe, O Vrajadipe Radha, that is the owner and the maintenance and one and only authority of Vrindavan. Vrajeshwari Vrajadipe Shri Radhike Namostate. I offer, perpetually offer my respectful obeisances to you, O Srimati Radhika, who is the one and only maintainer and authority of Vrajdham. So she is the queen of everything. And it is also actually mentioned in uh, a very beautiful shloka in Brihad Gautamiya Tantra. It is said, Devi Krishna Mahi Prokta Radhika Paradevata Sarva Lakshmi Mahi Sarva Kanti Sammohini Paraha. That, that means Devi Krishna Mahi Prokta Radhika Paradevata. What does it mean? That she who brilliantly shines, who is not different from Krishna. Why? Because she's the internal potency. So she's not different from Krishna, is called Srimati Radharani. 
देवी कृष्ण मई प्रोक्ता राधिका पर देवता टॉप मोस्ट देवता सर्व लक्ष्मी मई सर्व कांति सम्मोहिनी परा शी इज द मोस्ट वर्शिपेबल एंड प्रिसाइड ओवर ऑल द गॉडेस इज ऑफ फॉर्चून एंड शी पोजेस द स्प्लेंडर एंड कंप्लीटली बिल्डर्स कृष्णा बिकॉज शी इज द सुप्रीम इंटरनल पोटेंसी ऑफ कृष्णा so what more is left to be said she is the queen of everything of raj she is a queen of krishna also so so then with krishna being the king we have you know when you go to vrindavan you don't usually hear that krishna the king of vrind krishna the king of raj krishna is the king of vrindavan you more often hear that the queen of vrindavan is shrimati radharani so krishna as the king of vrindavan is not as famous as the queen of vrindavan so how did this come to be how did it become that radharani the queen of vrindavan became vrindavaneshwari and krishna is not spoke krishna is mostly nanda nandan or shyam sundar or you know vrajendra nandan that is the the son of nanda baba but radharani is always known as vrindavaneshwari vrajeshwari so how did this come into being so we'll begin with this um, very famous past time that took place between radha and krishna so when was the coronation of krishna as the king when did it happen and when did coronation of radharani as the queen of vrindavan take place so this is a very nice past time which is described by shrila jiva goswami in um, and it is called as madhav mahotsav that is the coronation of shrimati radharani it's a very long uh, story but we'll do it in parts today i'll give you a little glimpse of what happened before the coronation and how the coronation took place we can take that in our next class if it is possible before radhashtami so it will be very nice to see how we coronate if if it is possible maybe next sunday if everything you know goes fine with all the arrangements of the classes so we'll begin with uh, touching the past time of coronation of krishna as the king first so the crowning of krishna as the king of vrindavan was in essence a very playful past time which took place between the cowherd boys and between krishna in the forest of chatravan so it is a very beautiful past time and chatravan is a very beautiful forest the word chatravan means the forest of marvel and wonderment so this took place in the forest of chatravan so this past time begins with one day all the cowherd boys and krishna they were tending their cows in chatravan and as the boys were usually having their discussion that how they can glorify krishna in a very unique way and then suddenly shridama suggested that maybe we should make the king of raj we should make krishna the king of raj and all the boys hearing this became very blissful they said yes yes let's do it let's make krishna the king of vrindavan and at once they got busy making the arrangements of coronation of king as uh, coronation of krishna as the king of vrindavan so after much preparation all day long they prepared and by afternoon they had all the arrangements done so what did they do they made krishna sit on a royal regal stone they made a nice stone and they covered it with flowers and you know bouquets and they made him sit on a royal regal throne and beneath the canopy of flowers they made a canopy over it and they made krishna sit on this beautiful throne and there was a reef of uh, fresh leaves and buds and flowers which was created and what they did was they put that reef as a crown on krishna's head so they put leaves and buds and flowers and they crowned him it was very beautiful a natural you know crown made of leaves and flowers and krishna looked very beautiful in them and krishna loves wild flowers that's the best ornament which radha and krishna like they love 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 flowers so if you want to serve radha and krishna and please them offering them flowers is one of the most precious garments you can offer a ornament sorry you can offer so also this is a very playful past time that took place so krishna happily he assumed the role of king and then he appointed madhu mangal as his main minister and he told madhu mangal you boys now go around all of you all go around and you all spread the word 
that I have been appointed as the king of Raj. And go and distribute this news far and wide. Everybody should know. So Madhu Mangal and his friends, they, you know, they set off. They like to, uh, they wanted to do this ghoshana, this proclamation that Krishna has become the king of Vrindavan. So they went out in each and every forest of Vrindavan. They went and they proclaimed, O oh, residents of Vrindavan, they said, just hear this, that the only authority now in Vrindavan is the son of Nanda Maharaj. Krishna has been crowned as the king of this land. And anyone who's found picking flowers or fruits without his permission, unlawfully, shall be brought before him and severely punished. So they were all proclaiming this, that Krishna has become the king and don't you all ever dare try and steal flowers and fruits. Otherwise, you all will be punished. If you disobey the king's authority, even, the, even in the slightest way, you shall be dealt with very strictly and mercilessly. So Krishna will be merciless with you if you break and disobey the rules. And then Madhu Mangal proceeded to address not only the various personalities, like he told all this to in the marketplaces to the gopis, to the gopas, but he also and his friends, they went to the forests and they were also addressing all the animals. And they were addressing the herds of the deers, the flocks of the birds, the muster of peacocks, the pride of lions and the school of fish. Everybody, every animal, every lata pata, every, every animal, everybody was getting this news that Krishna has become king of Vrindavan. And this is how Vrindavan is. Everyone was very happy to hear. And there was nobody who was disagreeing with this. Not a single person, animal, leaf, flower, fruit disagreed with this. They were all very happy. This is all Braj. This is all Braj Ras. And everybody agreed to it except one group. And who were they? They were the gopis in Radharani's camp. When they heard this, they became very excited. And they suddenly, they were collecting flowers nearby in a group. And they heard this and they looked at each other and they said, how can this be? We have to go and tell Lalita Sakhi this. And they ran to Lalita Sakhi. They were excited and they ran to her. And they went and gave this news to Lalita Sakhi. And at that time, Lalita Sakhi was attending to Radharani. She was making a beautiful crown and she was of flowers and she was decorating Radharani's hair. And as soon as Lalita Devi heard this news, her face became red with anger. She couldn't tolerate anybody, none other than Radharani to be the authority over Vrindavan. Her face became red and she was trying to place that crown and dress Radharani's beautiful hair and her hands were trembling with anger. And she said, something has to be done. This is just not right. So she was upset and she, she, was, she tried, but she couldn't place those flower crown on um, Radharani's beautiful hair. And it was just shaking too much and turning to her friends, you know, Lalita Sakhi said, in reality, we should see Radharani as the queen of Vrindavan. And what does it matter if these cowherd boys make up this make-believe King Krishna and, you know, and just go and tell these animals who can't even speak, they are dumb. It doesn't matter, you know, that these cowherd boys just made up this uh, false story and told it all over the animals and to everyone. It doesn't matter because they are foolish, she said. In their foolish play, they are doing all this. And then we are going to do something. We are going to come up with a plan. And then while saying this, Lalita, Radha, uh, Lalita placed the crown on Radharani's head and she announced with a smile that let this crown made of the forest's treasures and these beautiful flowers proclaim Brad's real monarch. She said the real monarch is Srimati Radharani. And she placed the crown on Radharani's they all cheered Radharani this way. And then Lalita decided that she had to do something. So she went to Vrinda Devi and she told Vrinda Devi, Oh Sakhi, oh friend, we have to do something. And you know, she, she explained to her what had happened and she said, at once assemble a battalion of all the gopis here and you have to 
go and capture those cowherd boys send our gopis to capture those cowherd boys who have been spreading these rumors about krishna being the king and she said um you have to arm them with weapons and she said give them a baton of flowers as the weapons so in vrindavan you know you not see axes and guns and swords so the gopis weapons were a stick and at the top of the stick there were a bunch of flowers a bouquet of flowers so they armed themselves with a baton of flowers and thousands and thousands of gopis they set forth to catch the cowherd boys and to dethrone krishna and they said how can this be and then so vrinda devi immediately she armed the thousands of gopis with flower batons and the she told them go to the forest that was a chhatravan and start bringing all the cowherd boys back here in front of us tie them up with flower garlands tie their hands behind their back and string them completely and pull them back here so they set forth you know these thousands of gopis with these batons flower batons in their hands and they were all over vrindavan and as they were going they encountered all the cowherd boys who were going again from forest to forest and place to place proclaiming krishna to be the king so there they came across subala madhu mangal and as soon as these gopas saw they were surrounded by these thousands of angry gopis they got scared so they started running they started fleeing everybody all the gopas fled from there except madhu mangal because you know madhu mangal is a kind of plump he is little mota and he he is not very agile he can't run very fast so he tried but he couldn't so the gopis caught him and they knew that you know he is the right hand man of krishna and he's been the one who's actually proclaiming that krishna has been the king of vrindavan so all of them fled except madhu mangal so they caught hold of madhu mangal and they tied him up you know they tied his hands behind his back with a flower garland and they began to take him to shrimati radharani so this is a uh, sweet vrindavan where there the shackles are flowers for the opposition very beautiful so and then he was brought before shrimati radharani who when shrimati radharani saw him she told him that don't you know that i am actually the real authority over this land of vrindavan but your imposter king krishna is ruling the kingdom and that is an offense she and he, for that he must be punished radharani told madhu mangal and then madhu mangal didn't know what to do so he hung his head very low like this and defiantly he said make my punishment such that my belly is always full you know madhu mangal is very petu he likes to eat a lot but he didn't know what to do now he was punished with thousands of angry gopis all shackled in garlands so he said okay so whatever the punishment is you have decided to punish me and krishna just make sure that my belly is full in that punishment so radharani heard this and she frowned and she said oh she said she clapped her hands twice and she ordered the gopis and she said open his shackles open his shackles open his arms she said release him what kind of brahmana is he he is a fake fake brahmana he is always thinking of filling his belly and she said release him and tell him to go to krishna and take my message to krishna tell your would be king to give up your false title she she said tell krishna to give up his false title or pay the price for that and then you know they opened the shackles of the legs and everything but they did not open the shackles of the hands so his hands behind his body was still tied and he was sent back to krishna with the message that krishna has to give up his false title and he went back and then when he arrived at the forest of chhatravan where krishna was krishna got up from his regal throne and he embraced madhu mangal and he said how is everything going how is all the proclamation going uh, and then madhu mangal you know he said why are your hands tied and then madhu mangal explained everything that happened and he told everything that happened between him and the gopis and then krishna was very bewildered he said madhu mangal he said how could this have happened so madhu mangal replied 
very gravely he replied he said well the result of our proclamation and proclaiming you the king of vrindavan is this this is what has happened because we went around around proclaiming you as the king this is the result of what is you know the proclamation and he said actually in truth krishna i have to agree that the real monarch of this land as long as i have seen is shrimati radharani so he also agreed to it so and he said we have challenged the authority of shri radha and unless you surrender to her krishna i fear you two are going to meet the same ignoble fate as i have met you will have the same fate as me so i beg he said my friend i beg to you earnestly please abandon your impudence please show respect to shrimati radharani and surrender so krishna began to seriously consider this situation he said maybe i should go on a war with the gopis i should also get all my cowherd boys ready with all the flower batons and leaves and everything and we should all go on a actual fight with the gopis and then you know we should have a war gopis against gopas and then maybe i could win over but then he thought for a while and then he also got a little scared because you know he saw what happened to madhumangal and all the gopas had also fled and they came and they said oh we saw all the angry gopis and their weapons were way stronger than us and their number is way more than us and you know when gopis are angry you know women are angry all the men get scared so that what happened even in the spiritual world so then he thought about it for a long time on his regal throne and then he smiled and then he said it's actually he smiled but shastras say that surrendering to shri radharani seemed more thrilling to krishna than waging a war with her and the gopis so he decided to finally surrender to shrimati radharani so he told madhumangal okay madhumangal all the cowherd boys let's all go to the groove where shrimati radharani is and we will surrender unto her we will agree that she is the queen of vrindavan so even before actually krishna reached there radharani's parrots are always hanging around um, krishna's camp to see what they are planning so radharani's parrots they flew immediately and they gave this news to shrimati radharani and her camp that krishna has agreed for you to be the queen of vrindavan he has accepted you as the authority as the real monarch of vraj and they are actually coming with intentions to surrender so krishna started going with all his coward boys and you know there are no secrets in vrindavan you can't keep any secrets in vrindavan because the parrots of vrinda devi they will convey the news within seconds and minutes so that the leelas of radha and krishna are orchestrated so even today if you go to vrindavan you'll see lot of parrots there so they are the uh, messengers of vrinda devi so we should all they are very elevated souls they have taken birth in vrindavan to perform past times so we should offer our respectful obeisances to these parrots also so they had already spilled the beans and krishna was on his way he was coming to surrender to radharani and shastras then say that when krishna approached shrimati radharani what happened when krishna started coming there shrimati radharani's face turned pale her limbs started trembling and tears began to well in her eyes with the ecstasy that she was soon going to see her sham sundar so lalita devi noticed all this and lalita is very protective about shrimati radharani and she never likes to show that radharani is a weakling and she is always telling radharani be firm don't give in to krishna show your man show your anger but when radharani is very soft she is very soft hearted when she sees krishna she forgets all this man she forgets you know all this haughtiness which lalita devi has taught her for many many hours so lalita devi immediately is always there next to radharani to you know Uh, boost her confidence so lalita devi noticed and she placed her reassuring hand on radharani's forearm and she said dear one 
be steady she told radhara don't show tears be steady to accept surrender from a defeated rival you must display real composure and it should be befitting a victorious monarch like you so don't be like this crying in front of him so radharani listened to her she took a deep breath and she calmed down and then she addressed her own mind and she said oh friend please be calm radharani is talking to herself she said please be calm your desires will be fulfilled soon enough and then it is written that krishna as he was approaching radharani was blinded by the golden radiance and effulgence that came from shrimati radharani and then he came forward and as he chanted radharani's name the glare faded him faded faded away to reveal the most beautiful shri radhika and there she was seated seated on a nice beautiful jeweled crown sorry jeweled throne and surrounding shri radha were thousands of gopis and those gopis they were armed with the flower batons ready to fight just in case krishna and the cowherd boys attacked them so seeing krishna like this you know krishna came there and he saw radharani beautiful on the throne and then when he saw all the gopis with all those arms he said you know i did really well by not waging a war against them you know i don't think me and my cowherd boys could have survived against them so he was happy and contented and then as radharani and krishna got closer krishna turned pale seeing radharani so beautiful krishna turned pale his limbs stiffened and he froze in his path and streams of tears started shooting from his eyes seeing this beautiful form of vrindavaneshwari shri radhika so madhu mangal immediately now was there just like lalita is there by radharani side immediately madhu mangal came and he caught hold of krishna's hand and he said oh my love struck friend don't let a few moments of happiness deprive you of the feast of bliss that is awaiting you at shri radharani side so control your heart and keep walking we have to go and surrender so krishna came close enough and when krishna came close enough to the gopis and shrimati radharani krishna radharani thought that i am most fortunate not only can i see shri krishna's enchanting form but i can also hear his ankle bells approach so and as radha and krishna met each other everybody was very happy so everybody in rindavan is always serving to let radha and krishna meet and come together so when they see radha and krishna come together everybody is very happy they forget all their differences so lalita sakhi and madhu mangal you know they are they are always fighting with each other because they are krishna's right hand man is madhu mangal and radharani's right hand sakhi is lalita sakhi so they are always fighting with each other but when radha and krishna come together lalita sakhi and madhu mangal they exchanged notable glances like yes you know we have achieved what we wanted to we have achieved radha and krishna coming together and everyone around was also very happy and everybody wanted to facilitate this meeting so then uh, madhu mangal held krishna's hand and he playfully addressed shrimati radharani so because krishna was choked seeing radharani and madhu mangal spoke on behalf of krishna he said oh powerful queen of vrindavan vrindavaneshwari shri radha i have advised my friend shri krishna the prince of nandagram to submit to your royal authority following my wise counsel he has come here to surrender himself at your lotus feet unconditionally so madhu mangal looked at krishna and then at radha before continuing further he looked to see what you know krishna's expression was to see what radha's expression was and then he said and as a token of his um, subservience to you shrimati radharani krishna will offer you his most valuable possession and his most valuable possession and his priceless possession is his embrace so please graciously accept it 
So when uh, Madhu Mangal said this, all the gopis and gopas started giggling. So, and you know, then Madhu Mangal then stepped forward and he took the wreath of flowers from Krishna's head, which, you know, they had made this beautiful wreath of flowers and buds and fresh leaf and crowned Krishna as the king of Vrindavan. He took it from Krishna's head and he placed it at Srimati Radharani's lotus feet. And then Krishna also, he took out his flute. You know, Krishna's main um, weapon to attract all the gopis and Srimati Radharani is the flute. So Krishna took out his weapon. You know, when the prisoner surrenders to the king, they what do they do? They surrender all their weapons. They go down on their knees and they say, I am all surrendered. So Krishna did the same. First his crown came off. Then his flute came out. And then Krishna knelt before Sri, Sri Mati Radharani and went down on her on his knees with folded hands. And then he accepted Sri Mati Radharani and said, I am surrendering to you as the authority of the monarch of Vrindavan, Vrindavaneshwari. And then the cowherd boys who were with Krishna loudly proclaimed um, that Sri Radharani was the queen of Vrindavan. So they all said, Vrindavaneshwari Sri Radharani ki jai, Vrindavaneshwari Sri Radharani ki jai, Vrindavaneshwari Sri Radharani ki jai. Everybody, all the gopas and the gopis, they started proclaiming this. And then the cowherd boys also, you know, side by side, they were saying that, and the queen of Krishna's heart ki jai, queen of Krishna's heart ki jai. So they said, she's also actually the queen of Krishna's heart. So in this way, there was a very sweet pastime that took place. And then um, it is mentioned that Radharani called Krishna to sit beside her on the throne. And Shastra say that Krishna very happily agreed to be subservient and obedient to Srimati Radharani. Now in the meanwhile, Madhu Mangal was dancing in great happiness that uh, you know this meeting had taken place and Lalita Devi was also very pleased with Madhu Mangal. And to show her gratitude, she what she did is Lalita Sakhi took a laddu and she shoved it in the mouth of Madhu Mangal. And Madhu Mangal is always happy when there is prasad and sweets. And then uh, Madhu Mangal told Lalita Sakhi, Oh Lalita Sakhi, you have committed a great offense by shackling me with flower garlands behind when I come. So as a messenger of Krishna. And uh, if you want to get rid of your sins, you must feed me 100,000 laddus. Only then you will be free from the sins of shackling a brahmana. So Lalita Saki smiled and she ordered one of the gopis to go and bring a tray of all sweets. And she brought, a gopi came and she brought a tray of sweets and it was presented before Madhu Mangal. And then Madhu Mangal, you know, he, he loves to eat. As soon as he saw the tray of fruits, he said, oh, thank you so much. Uh, I have some important business to do now. You all carry on. And he took the tray and he went inside the forest and he ate up all the sweets. And then everyone was very happy. Everyone was drowned in transcendental happiness. They laughed, they played, they sang, they fanned Radha and Krishna. And it got a little late. So it was time for all of them to go home. And everyone turned to go home. And as they left, they reminisced about this beautiful, playful pastime they had played that day declaring Srimati Radharani as the queen of Vrindavan. So this is what happened. So such pastimes are very deep. They are very profound. And actually, this is the absolute truth. We have to realize our Acharyas have taken this, these pastimes to be very deep and profound. Hearing specifically about today, how Sri Radha controls Krishna with her divine love and how she is the queen of Vrindavan, Many Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis aspire to be the servant of Srimati Radharani because of this reason. And actually, Raghunadas Goswami, he goes even further, he goes even far to say in his Swa Niyam Dashakam, it's a writing by Raghunadas Goswami, he has written Swa Niyam Dashakam, 10 rules. The verse 3 and verse 4, it is mentioned. I'll, Say it in English so all of y'all can understand. Even though I suffer in long separation from the divine couple, I shall not even for a second, for a moment, leave the land of Vrindavan. Raghunath Das Goswami says, I will not leave the land of Vrindavan even for a second. 
where Shri Shri Radha and Krishna eternally enjoy unparalleled transcendental pastimes. And I shall not even, if he himself invites me to go to the opulent king of the Yadu in Dwarka, he said, I will not leave Vrindavan, even if Krishna in Dwarka calls me to meet him, I will not leave Vrindavan even for a moment. But then again, he goes to say, but if with my own ears, I hear Radharani tell me that she is going to Dwarka where Lord Hari is. Then with excitement in my heart, because Radharani has gone to Dwarka, I leave Vrindavan and run and fly faster than Garuda to go and serve Srimati Radharani there. So this is his commitment to Srimati Radharani. So he says in a very beautiful shloka, Tavai vasmi, tavai vasmi, na jivami, tvaya vina, iti vidnyana devi tvam, nayamam charanantikam. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. I am nobody else's, but I am yours. This is a very beautiful prayer by Raghunadas Goswami. We can all recite this prayer every day when you all go in front of the deities and the prayer to Radhani can be tavai vasmi, tavai vasmi, na jivami, tvaya vina, iti vidnyana devi tvam, nayamam charanantikam. I will send these prayers to Padmavati Mataji and Seema Mataji and all of y'all can recite these Sorry, when y'all go in front of the deities. Now, with this as the background, the plot becomes even more thick. The plot thickens. What happens? Next morning, Chandravali heard about this playful coronation of Srimati Radharani as the queen. And she became very upset. Who is Chandravali? She is Radharani's chief competitor. She is Radharani's chief rival. She is in the opposite camp. And she has immense love for Krishna. And Krishna also likes her. But none, none like how he likes Radha. So she is always competing. Radharani's main rival is Chandravali's camp and Radharani's camp. So just like Lalita Sakhi is Radharani's right hand. Chandravali's right hand is Padma Sakhi. So now everyone in Vrindavan had understood that it was all in fun. The coronation was all in fun. But nevertheless, Chandravali was still upset. She didn't like it even in fun that Radharani became the queen of Vrindavan and she had full access to Krishna. She was crying and crying and crying. And she spoke to her best friend Padma who pacified her. Padma said, okay, I have come up with a very nice, bold plan. I'm going to carry out this plan and everything will turn and things will change and they'll, every, everything will be favorable on your side. Don't worry. So it was decided that Padma would convince Krishna to crown Chandravali as the queen of Vrindavan instead. So which is meant which meant the queen of Vrindavan means that she's going to have to so what, what does Queen of Vrindavan mean? That she has a lot of access to Krishna and pastimes with Krishna. And not only, she didn't want to do this in a distant groove, Padma. She had planned this publicly and openly in front of everyone. So a few days later, amidst a large crowd in Vrindavan, in a marketplace, where all the gopis, gopas were there, she went and there Krishna was also present. And she went there and she, Padma stood there and she declared very loudly where Krishna, the Gopas, the Gopis and everybody in Vrindavan could hear. She said, now, she said, may the beautiful qualified Gopi whose name begins with Chandra be the queen of Vrindavan. So Padma went and made this loud proclamation. And may the Gopi and may that Gopi and none other be the queen of Krishna's heart. This is what Padma went and proclaimed in front of everybody in Vrindavan. And Krishna heard this. When all the Vrajavasis were present there, they heard this proclamation and everybody was shocked. Why were they shocked? Because they knew only one queen so far. That is the daughter of Rishabhanu. So everyone turned and looked at Krishna, expecting him to say something. And then she said, no, no, 
May the beautiful qualified Gopi, called as Radha Rani, be the queen of Vrindavan and his residence. May the Gopis and none other be the queen of my heart. This was what Krishna wanted to say, but uh, he was too shocked to see what was happening. But somehow, when she said, "May the Gopi Chandra be the queen," Krishna, by the influence of the potency of Yoga Maya. that is purnamasi what happened the word chandra reminded krishna of shri radha's partial expansion and she is actually a gopi called chandrakanti so when the word chandra was uttered by padma he thought chandra is none other than chandrakanti who is an expansion of radha rani so he thought actually padma is meaning Chand- radha rani only but it was not that he misunderstood padma so this braja gopi chandrakanti is described in shastras as the personification of radha rani's effulgence she comes from the effulgence of shrimati radha rani so she is actually non different from shrimati radha rani we'll speak more about her towards the end of the class we'll explain why krishna got confused obviously it was a yoga maya potency which bewildered him and thought that this was shrimati radha rani now krishna assuming that padma was speaking about this chandrakanti he let out a sigh saying yes let it be so but hearing these words the gopis in radha rani's camp and shrimati radha rani and her friends they took this to be the actual decision of krishna from his heart so they thought in their heart krishna has actually he likes chandravali more than radha rani and and they understood this that chandravali should be crowned as the queen of vrindavan and it is mentioned in brihad gautamya tantra in matsya padma puran and shri jiva goswami also mentions it in madhav mahotsav that everyone actually hurried and rushed home to share this unfortunate news nobody was happy when they heard this that krishna has actually revealed his heart that he wanted chandravali to be the queen queen of vrindavan so overnight everybody was talking about this room this news and they were not quite happy and then when this dawned on krishna all the gopas came and they told krishna that this is what people are thinking that you want chandravali to become the queen what what did they do the next day realizing that he had very much been misunderstood krishna decided to do something so krishna thought that i have to do something immediately i have to come up with a plan so then he pleaded and he went to purnamasi and he said devi o oh purnamasi devi my life is in your hands if you do not save me i shall perish i will be doomed so then she said okay let's uh, let's go to vrinda devi so vrinda devi and purnamasi they decided what to do vrinda devi was a little upset she said vrinda devi said krishna your careless conclusions of padma's words has deeply wounded radha and this time you have to do something really extraordinary to win her back and then vrinda devi paused for a moment and then she said this news of chandravali's coronation is being spread by rumors in my opinion if we publicly declare shri radha to be the queen will be the final public coronation official coronation of shrimati radha rani it should be a ceremony in front of the entire vrindavan and only that way we can stop these rumors so um some references say that there was um, a coronation of only krishna in the in the forest some of them say that there was a playful coronation of radha rani as we described however bhakti ratnakar describes that some days after these two playful coronations there was a final grand official public coronation of shrimati radha rani which was arranged by none other than our dear krishna so krishna seemed a bit perplexed by this plan of vrinda devi for a public proposal 
of declaration that Srimati Radharani would be crowned the queen of Vrindavan. And he said, how is this ever going to work? How are you going to do this? So Vrinda Devi consulted with senior Purnamasi Devi and they came up with a great idea. So next day, what did Vrinda Devi do? She went and she climbed a big hill on top of Vrindavan. And she commanded Lord Brahma to speak from the sky. She told him what to say. So she told him that Brahmaji, you have to make a declaration openly and publicly. So a few minutes later, Lord Brahma spoke in a celestial voice from the heaven above. The residents of Vrindavan began to hear this celestial voice and this proclamation. He began and he said, Purnamasi, O great yogini, without delay, do arrangements so that Srimati Radharani will be crowned as the queen of Vrindavan by seating Sri Radha upon a jewel throne and preparing her royal Abhishek. You will spread her glory, not only throughout Gokul, but also throughout the entire earth and the entire universe shall rejoice seeing this coronation. This royal Abhishek, royal bath, will proclaim the love for Sri Radha cherished by the Vrajvasis. All the love that all the Vrajvasis have for Sri Radha will be shown by this bathing's Abhishek ceremony. And especially it will be shown by Lord Krishna. How much he loves Srimati Radharani will be shown by him. Therefore, it should be performed on the full moon day of this month and the month of Madhu. And then the voice from the sky addressed Srimati Radharani. So Brahmaji now addressed Srimati Radharani. He said, O Sri Radha, do not be shy to accept such public worship because this happiness, this ceremony will bestow happiness, peace and prosperity to everyone and you should embrace this service so that you can do good to the world. And then again, the heavenly voice of Brahma spoke to Purnamasi and ordered her to start the auspicious ceremony at once by observing the introductory rites. You know, whenever the ceremony starts, there's something called as Adivas ceremony before that. So Brahmaji said, you can start the Adivas ceremony, the introductory rites of the coronation. And then the celestial voice felt silent. So all the Vrajvasis were amazed to hear this order is descending from the heavens. And they were very happy to hear that Srimati Radharani now is actually going to be coronated as the queen. But it is described that everybody was happy except Chandravali and her friends. And they suffered utter disappointment. They were very sad to hear this. So what was everyone, everyone's reaction when they heard this? All the Vrajvasis, what were they going to do? It is described very nicely by Rupa Goswami. It is said that Purnamasi Devi and Vrinda Devi, they fainted in ecstasy when they heard this news. And Sri Radha, she went very much numb. She couldn't speak anything. No words were coming out of her mouth. Then the girlfriends of Radharani, they embraced each other and they were very happy. And Nanda Baba was in a state of disbelief. He couldn't believe that, oh, that Radharani is going to be coronated and this is coming from heaven, celestial voice. And then King Rishabhanu was so proud of Srimati Radharani that he started distributing various gifts to his uh, subjects, his praja. And Kirtida Sundari, his mother of Srimati Radharani, she was deciding how she's going to bathe Srimati Radharani and collect the various items for bathing. And Mukura, the old gopi, she started singing wildly about glories of Srimati Radharani. And Mother Yashoda immediately called for the festival to begin. The Gopas and the cowherd men, all of them, they were dancing. And Krishna wandered about in the forest of Barsana, holding the hand of Subala. Krishna was very happy. He was holding the hand of Subala and he was roaming around in the forest of Barsana. And after the shock of initial ecstasy had worn off, the Vrajvasis buried themselves in the arrangement of the coronation. They started 
making plans and preparations for the coronation. So what were they doing? The craftsmen and construct craftsmen were brought together and they started constructing platforms, the throne, the canopies. Women placed uh, all their water pots, water pots with leaves and fragrant waters and all auspicious items. And young gopis, you know, they started fa fashioning with their ornaments. They decided what to wear, what to make Radharani wear. And the children, they were distributing incense in Vrindavan. And there were some, you know, serious obstacles that were created by Chandravali and her camp during this period. But they all, you know, tided over this situation. And the ceremony of Radharani went on with pomp and show. And it is described that, um, described in by Raghunadas Goswami again in his Vraj Vilas Tava in text 61, he writes, ordered by Brahma who spoke from the sky, Purnamasi crowned Srimati Radharani, the queen of Vrindavan, the queen of this beautiful forest, by jubilantly sprinkling the waters of Manasi Ganga and other sacred rivers upon her head. And our delighted demi goddesses, I pray that the sacred place known as Unmata Radhastali, this place where coronation took place, is called Unmata Radhastali. I pray that the sacred place known as Unmata Radhastali, the place where Srimati Radharani became overwhelmed with happiness, may sprinkle some transcendental happiness upon me. So, the, this was his sweet prayer in Vraja. Vilastava text 61. So I'm just mentioning this. If you'll make a note of this, you all can go back and read these beautiful verses and reminisce this pastime of coronation of Srimati Radhara. And so we have mentioned here that the gopis, which Krishna thought was, you know, Chandrakanti, was which Padma mentioned as Chandra. We mentioned that Chandrakanti was a personified effulgence of Srimati Radharani. Now, according to Padma Puran, Chandrakanti was an Apsara. And we know that Apsaras are very talented. They're very talented singers. They're very talented dancers. And they come from a higher planet. And they come from heavenly planets. So, Srila Rupa Goswami in his Tavamala uh, goes even deeper to mention. And he mentioned this, mentions this in his prayer called as Shri Vrindavaneshwari Nam Ashtotara Shata Nam Stotra. So in this, the, the, he mentions 108 names of Srimati Radharani. You will find this in Stava Mala, which is written by Rupa Goswami. In verse 11 and 12, it is stated, there is Chandrakanti is described as an expansion of Srimati Radharani, who appeared as a Gandharvika, that is a Gandharva, to teach others how to serve and love Shri Krishna. And he further states that Chandrakanti especially appeared to teach the Gandharva girls, the higher planetary girls, how to serve Krishna. And then Jiva Goswami states that these Gandharva girls appeared in Srimati Radharani's coronation during the Abhishek or the bathing time. And Purnamasi noticed them. And she asked those girls who were personally trained by Chandrakanti to sing the glories of Radha and Krishna. And because of their previous association with Chandrakanti, they sang all those songs and they revealed in those songs all their knowledge about the Radha and Krishna meeting pastimes. Why? Because their guru was none other than expansion of Srimati Radharani. So describing the mutual love between Radha and Krishna, these songs were sung and the services the various gopis did their songs describe those various services if you see even the prayers of our previous acharyas bhakti vinod thakur shila narottam das thakur in narottam uh, shila narottam das thakur in his um, beautiful compositions called prarthana he is all the time pleading and pleading and pleading to be the servant of shrimati radharani and krishna and in that he is describing that may i fan the divine couple, may I apply sandalwood, may I offer incense, may I offer them betel nut, sweet, fragrant waters, nice food stuff. These are all the services which our acharyas have aspired for. And this is all what we should also aspire for. So these songs were beautifully sung there by the Gandharva girls trained by Chandrakanti. 
which described the pastimes and services of the gopis and pastimes of radha and krishna so it is obvious that chandrakanti's teachings and the girls had um, become they had become well versed and they had they were all spiritually realized and it is stated in bhakti rasamrit sindhu uh, rupa goswami further goes on to describe chandrakanti's teachings by example he says that she was a celebrated she was very celebrated she was a fair complexion girl who observed strict celibacy rejecting marriage being determined to obtain krishna as her husband she also faithfully maintained very strict spiritual spiritual practices her sadhana was very strict and she constantly meditated on the transcendental form of the lord chanting his glories so she was always thinking of krishna so just like radharani is thinking of krishna her expansion is also thinking of krishna now again shila jiva goswami further elaborates these statements he says by noting the transcendental form of the lord on whom chandrakanti meditated upon was a deity of krishna so she meditated exclusively on krishna moreover bhakti rasamrit sindhu also cites that chandrakanti was a sadhaka who is a sadhaka one who is practicing spiritual practice and again teaching us how to cultivate spontaneous attachment for krishna by first awakening devotion on an ecstatic platform that is bhava and then entering into the loving devotional service that is prema so this cultivation of krishna consciousness was uh, explained by her through her teachings to the other gandharvas so this is what chandrakanti was and how krishna you know it's not very easy for krishna to get confused between chandra and chandrakanti but he thought that this chandra was chandrakanti and by the potency of yoga maya he mistook this chandrakanti so so we can conclude that the gopi chandrakanti is personified effulgence of shrimati radharani in three forms as a gandharva as a gopi and later on also it is mentioned in chaitanya charitamrit as gadadhar das so now coming to the end let us conclude our talk by offering a sweet prayer at the lotus feet of shrimati radharani this prayer again is um, written by none other than our das goswami uh, this is one prayer which i urge all of you all to you know memorize and say it every day to shrimati radharani so it goes like this it goes bhajami radha ravinda netram smarami radha madhura smitasyam vadami radha karuna bharadram tatho mamanyasti gatir na kapi what does it mean bhajami radha ravinda netram that means i worship shrimati radharani whose eyes are like lotus petals bhajami radha arvind means a lotus arvind netram smarami radha madhura smitasyam that means i smara means smaran karna means to remember shrimati radharani i am remember shrimati radhika whose face is sweetly smiling so smarami radha madhura smitasyam vadami radha karuna bharadram that is i speak that means vadami i speak of her whose heart is melting with compassion vadami radha karuna bharadram tato mamanya asti gatir na kapi that means my life has no other purpose than serving her so with this we will end today it was a little long class because the coronation took time and everything good take some time cannot hurry radharani's coronation so thank you all very much i really enjoyed sharing all this with all of you and um, you know this nice glories of radharani and krishna becoming the king and queen of vrindavan moreover talking about vrindavaneshwari shrimati radharani uh, since radhashtami is approaching so next class we will listen to some more nectarian pastimes that we can all relish to purify our hearts Uh, which will 
hopefully um, invoke divine love in us some point in some life and uh, so that we can enter these pastimes at some point in Goloka Vrindavan. So Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Nitai Gaur Premanande. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Vancha Kalpata Rubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha, Patita Naam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna Mataji, Baba Dhanava, thank you so much thank for you. Uh, uh, so beautiful pastimes, narrating these pastimes. And as I say, I have a great time in my Sunday class, we have a Radha Krishna ki Bridge Leela ki pastimes, so that we can also learn something about Radha Krishna Bhakti. Mein aage Yes, Mataji, I'm happy to serve all of you all whenever you all order me. So let uh, me know whatever you all want to, then next class we can talk about the coronation of Radharani. The whole Abhishek in details is described and that will set the good mood for Radhashtami. Because on Radhashtami, we all do Abhishek of Srimati Radharani that day. So with what things in our heart, what things in our mind, what prayers we have to worship, we can take off. Thank you. So we'll end the session if nobody has any questions. Uh, Marti ji, questions uh, le sakte hai. Agar sam hai to agar kisi vaishnav ka koi prashna ho to aap hand raise kar sakte hai. Marti ji, sa put sakte hai. Koi prashna. Priya Devi Dasi Hare Krishna. Uh, this is Tulsi Gopi Dasi. I have one quick question. Hare Krishna, Tulsi Gopi. So, is Chandravali always unhappy when such pastimes happen between Radha and Krishna, or is that her eternal Leela, or is she only sometimes upset? Oh, yeah. Chandravali is um, in eternal anger every time. Krishna goes to Srimati Radharani. So it is transcendental anger, actually. So, so who, who relishes that rush? Like, why is this even there? This envy or anger? So I, I was discussing this uh, with senior devotees and they said that if Radharani orders you to be in Chandravali's camp, that is also a service that particular uh, soul, Manjari or Gopi, is doing in the spiritual world. Like we, we may not desire to be ever Chandravali. I don't think anybody will pray to Chandravali. But in the spiritual world, you are um, designated, you are ordered by Srimati Radharani to do that particular service in that particular camp. Because that gives pleasure to Srimati Radharani. So these pastimes which are going on transcendently in the, in the spiritual world, they are all to give pleasure to Srimati Radharani and Krishna to carry out a particular uh, pastime. So in that, Chandravali just happens to be in the opposite camp. All the uh, gopis in her camp also, they will support Chandravali. But again, this is part of the service to Srimati Radharani. Achacha, so Chandravali also has been somehow ordered or trained that she is supposed to do this. Seva. Yes. Hare Krishna. <laughs> How do we Make sure we don't end up there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, good question. I also fear that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's not in our hands. That's why we should probably keep saying, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, with Jnana Radha, Pam, Nayamam, Charanantikam, or Bhajami Radha, and say the prayers of Raghunath Das Goswami. But whatever our situation and whatever our position in the spiritual world is, Ultimately, we should always think that if that is bringing pleasure to Radharani and Krishna, uh, that is what we should do. It is not in our hands. It is good that if we end up in Radharani's camp, but uh, even if we are in Chandravali's camp, it is uh, bringing Radharani topmost pleasure. We should do it. Whenever possible, can you take pictures of those prayers and send in the group? I will try to chant those. Sure. Sure, I'll share them um, on 
um, where do you want to send it? You are not on the Doha group, so I'll send it to you privately. Okay. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sham Priya Devi Dasi Mataji. आप अपना प्रश्न पूछ सकते हैं. Hare Krishna Mataji. Done what Pranam Jai Shila Prabhupada. Very wonderful class Mataji. It was so nice to hear the past times. Uh, Mataji, uh, like how you said that, um, uh, like in the prarthana, we are always wanting that ki me Radha Krishna ko uh, like jula jula ho. I put chandan or fan Radha Rani. So uh, sometimes I think I don't know ki jab ham ya pe hamari uh, deities ghar pe hai, to ham wo sab karte hai. So sometimes I think that uh, jah uh, jab ham uh, like uh, we it's going to be taking long long lifetimes for us to even uh, go uh, to Goloka Vrindavan and do all this seva. So then sometimes I think it is rather to yapar reke. Then our deities we think that wo real Krishna Radha Krishna hai. So unko kare. क्योंकि हमको जन्म जन्म लगेंगे कि हम वहाँ पे जाएं और करें तो फिर और वहाँ पे दे सो सो मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस ऑफ सोल्स सबको सेवा चाहिए लाइक आई वांट टू डू दिस डू दिस तो हमको तो कब हमारा टर्न आएगा माता जी सो माता जी इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड राधा रानी एंड कृष्णा दे एक्नॉलेज ईच एंड एवरी सोल दिस य that we are always engaged in services. We will always be engaged under our Gurudev. And our Gurudev, like I mentioned in the beginning, is always under Rupa Goswami's um, service. So there's always hierarchy. Um, so based on what our Gurudev decides to allocate to us, our services will be such in the spiritual world. So you don't ever have to fear that there are millions and thousands. Now, can you imagine if they are having flower batons as their weapons and they are making flower garlands to tie these thousands of gopas? Kitna surface hoga? Can making thousands of gopis making flower batons? They are, you know, that is also service. So all these are services, making garlands in the spirit. Some service or the other is always there. The bathing ceremony, if you see, is so elaborate, so elaborate that even 100 people will find it difficult to go ahead with this uh, elaborate ceremony. So small, 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 there are so many services and that requires millions and millions of gopis because there are millions and millions of elaborate pastimes. In this material world, we see one Julan we are doing, one Janmashtami or one Radhashtami we are arranging, how much the whole temple congregation is working towards it. Similarly, these are done at more grand ways. So more battalion of gopis is required. More cowherd boys are required. And every soul is engaged in the service in some way or the other. Either you will sing, you will apply chandan, you will you know, grade the chandan, or you will cook, you will cut. So many, you see all the services mentioned, you will be there in some way. And every soul is acknowledged by his Gurudev. And every Gurudev reports it to Rupa Manjari. Every Rupa Manjari reports it to Lalita Sakhi. And then Lalita Sakhi reports to Srimati Radha. So... Everyone is taken care of. You don't have to fear. And yes, doing this practice of serving our deities with fanning, chandan, offering fruits, flour, that is a practice for the spiritual world because this is what you will be doing eternally. So before you actually write your exam, you have to study very hard. And it comes after many, many births. It doesn't come eternally. Like it doesn't come very easily. You know, I think we had discussed at some point, the nine stages of, uh, you know, bhakti. We, we, we spoke about shraddha. We spoke about it starts, our bhakti starts with some belief. Then we spoke about sadhu sang. We come in contact with pure devotees. And that, that faith in Krishna becomes even more strong in the sadhu sang. And then bhajan kriya. We start our process of devotional service. Bhajan kriya is where you will start chanting, deity worship, learning about everything, scriptures, yatras. And then Anartha Nivriti. Anartha Nivriti is a period where you'll, you'll take up initiation and you'll practice all these very sincerely. And you'll try and you'll fall and you'll try and you'll fall and you'll try and you'll fall. Someday you can't chant well, someday you'll chant well, someday you'll do puja well, someday you won't, someday you won't be able to cook, you go to yatras. So this is Anartha Nivriti. This is where all our bad habits are all um, 
disappearing with these pra practices but these practices during anartha nivritti are fluctuating they are going good bad good bad good bad good bad but there comes a time when we offenselessly do our duties all of these anarthas are removed and then comes a period of nishtha nishtha is the fifth stage in what happens in nishtha our practice becomes very steady and firm and nothing can disturb our practice at this time and then when you do nishtha for a long period of time then comes ruchi what is ruchi ruchi is taste for devotion a higher taste for devotion and service and then after ruchi which is a sixth stage the seventh stage is asakti asakti means you become attached to your service you don't want to do anything else except your service everything else becomes secondary to you your relations your possessions your identity and you only are constantly thinking of serving the lotus feet of guru carrying out his orders and serving radha and krishna and then then comes the eighth stage the eighth stage is the stage of bhav that is you you start experiencing a little bit of love of godhead thoda sa aapko prem you know it's like god gives you a glimpse of his love that stage is called as bhav and then the last ninth stage is a stage of prema that is when you get actual true taste for devotion and you attain pure love of godhead you attain the lotus feet of krishna Now, this takes many lifetimes most of us it is said i have heard from our acharyas our gurujan most of us are stuck in the phase um, of bhajan kriya and anartha nivritti that is we are trying failing trying failing and then in you know su succeeding lives we will um, go towards nishtha ruchi asakti bhav and prem so we have to continue doing this mata ji this process is causing anartha nivritti in us this process where you are worshiping your radha krishna deities offering puja offering aarti cooking for them offering them incense sandalwood paste flowers garlands chanting in front of them singing for them these are our eternal services and these cause anartha nivritti these are the ones which will break down your anarthas these are the ones which will break your bad habits which will purify you and then you can come and sail in the smooth ship of nishtha where your devotion will go steady so if a soul is doing so much it will never go un um, noticed and you will get what you are supposed to deserve does an answer your question mata ji yes mata ji thank you so much very wonderfully explained mata ji so mata ji all this past times they keep going mm, like abhi bhi chal hi raha hai to wo sab past times Yes, Mata Ji. These past times are going on constantly. Yes. Thank you, Mata Ji. Shanti Ranti. They are always going. Eternal past times. Shanti Ranti. Thank you, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, all the devotees. माता जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अब मेरे को लगता है कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो अगले वीक फिर से आपकी कथा में सम्मिलित होंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच माता जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच माता जी और सच इन क्लास Thank you, Mata Ji. So we will meet next Hare. week. Hare Krishna. Mata Ji. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Thank you so much, Mata Ji.